Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 14 of my 3D printed R6 droid, which you can see spinning around just here. Last time I explained how I'm building a state machine in Arduino to control the whole droid to multitask and do various things at once, including lights and sounds. And this time we're going to have a little bit of a look at the 232 conversion so that it can suck up its centre foot and go into two leg mode and back again. The droid already has motorised shoulders so that it can move into three leg mode and back into two leg mode and those are currently using a belt drive which I really need to replace because the belts are a bit stretchy and sometimes they do skip. We do have the centre foot um, extending and retracting mechanism however which is a linear actuator using a piece of driven studding and that works pretty well. These belts are currently driving the shoulders, which are T5 belts. These are rubber belts and toothed pulleys on here. On the other side, these obviously don't have to go all the way around because this thing only turns 36 degrees. So these are just coupled with some 3D printed tooth grippers that are screwed into the shoulder hub. The motors, which you can just see there, look incredibly small, but they are actually um, more than up to the task. They're heavily geared with worm gears. And of course, this only turns around once to turn the shoulder 36 degrees. However, the belts do skip on the pulleys because there's quite a lot of force there. So the plan, of course, is to change those pulleys for these sprockets, which I've got, and also change the belts for steel chain, uh, which should be fairly easy to put on in the same way. And of course, that won't skip at all or stretch or do anything because it's incredibly tough. If you've ever changed the chain on a bicycle, you'll have seen a tool like this, which has a thing which winds up and pushes the links out of the bits of chain. Um, I don't have one for this size chain and having tried to uh, use a hammer to push them through with various tools, I haven't had much luck. So I've actually just hacksawed through the chain. Uh, but since I don't have to couple it back to itself again, that doesn't really matter. So let's have a closer look at those sprockets. These have got six mil bores in and they've got a place for a four mil grub screw. And those really are gonna grip the chain. There's gonna be uh, you know, no chance if that chain is kept tight of those skipping. Obviously, it's all made of steel instead of a stretchy rubber belt, so that's going to be perfect. I've installed one chain in one side of the droid there. I still need to do the other side, and I've done that by taking a strip of metal. This is steel, which I got at my local DIY store, and it's got three holes drilled in it. And I've also bent the uh, one installed around the shoulder hub there, and you can probably just see there's three screws in it and those are screwed into the holes I left in the shoulder hub. Um, at the end of those the chain is actually coupled to a bent piece so I've made these into brackets to hook the chain onto and um, I've actually hooked that on with cable ties or zip ties, I don't know if you can just see that, it's quite hard to actually um, see inside there and get focus. So um, basically the reason for that is that it's easy to couple it like that because I can just cable tie through the chain. And the other reason is that actually the cable ties will break quite easily if there's a safety issue. So for instance, if a child gets stuck in the conversion while it's happening or something like that, or I crash the droid, um, obviously instead of breaking bits of plastic, the cable ties will just shear and then that's fine because I can just put new ones on. So it's a bit of a fail safe as well. Here's the back view, you can see that I've got the sprocket installed there on the motor and the chain there which goes to the shoulder hub. And as I mentioned, the shoulder only turns 36 degrees, which is, you know, a tenth of 360. So um, of course that chain doesn't need to go round, so it can just be coupled to that piece of metal and work fairly well. We need some electronics to actually switch those motors. At the moment the wires are just hanging out of the back of the droid. So what I'm going to do is in fact use two relays, which are these blocks, to switch the motor in each direction. So each relay has a coil which is energized and that'll be switched uh, by the Arduino. And it also has changeover contacts that changes over one contact to two others when it's energized. So what I'm actually gonna do use is the common contacts attached to the motor and the changeover contacts on one side both attached to zero volts and the other side attached to 12 volts which will come straight off the LiPo. And that means when both of these contacts are down, the motor is off, when one is up and one is down, the motor spins one way, and the other way means it spins the other way. We're also gonna need some end switches so that it knows when the motor has finished turning. Obviously it doesn't wanna turn round and round and round because it will break the cable ties and jam the center foot. So we're gonna have two end switches and those are gonna be micro switches. 
um, and those are here and in fact what's going to happen is those are going to cut off the corresponding relay so that the motor cannot turn in that direction any longer it can only turn in the other direction because the relay will not energize those relay contacts via the end switches are going to be driven by a ULN 2803 which is a Darlington array and those are going to be driven by the Arduino which will be the second Arduino that's currently dealing with the lighting and animatronics and the reason for the ULN 2803 is basically that the Arduino outputs will not directly switch those relay coils so this is almost like a higher power switch that will switch the relay coils now I could build this whole thing as um, entirely solid state using MOSFETs but I quite like the idea of relays because you can kind of see what they're doing um, there is quite a bit of power although not that much unless it jams so I'm feeling a bit more comfortable with actual mechanical switches for this. It is going to make a clicking sound when it switches, but it's not going to happen that often and the motors are noisy enough anyway, so I'm not too bothered. And that looks like this. So this is my Darlington array, the ULN 2803, with a set of pin strips that I can wire to the Arduino. And those blue wires come out to contacts on the edge here so I can attach the switches, the end switches, back to the relays. So we'll have some that run between these wires and these wires, some that run over to the second board. So this one will deal with the centre foot retracting. So there's two relays there, so it can run the motor in each direction. And on this board, we've got the ones for each shoulder hub. So they run on independent relays because the motors may not run at exactly the same speed. And each one will have its own set of end switches. But essentially, those will be dri driven by the same Arduino output. So we'll just send those shoulders spinning in one direction. And each one will independently stop when it gets there. Here we are at the back of the droid, so I've obviously fitted these boards in here with all of the wires that go off to the switches. So I've got one end switch here, which is for the leg going down. The other one is right in the top there for the leg to come up, and that hits on an end stop when the centre foot comes up. Then I've got these end stop switches, which are fitted in each side. And the same at the front, so those... Um, basically have little stoppers on the hub there which press the switch and those are pressed at the moment because it's in two leg mode. So this appears to work, I've got a wire ready to go into my Arduino and if I bring these um, connectors high then I can make the centre foot move and the shoulders move until they hit the end switches. But I'm going to need some code to actually operate that and I have to do something quite sensible so I can't suck up the centre foot when it's in the three leg mode because then it will do a nose dive. So we need some various interlocks and safeties built into it before we can make it work. So a quick recap from a couple of episodes ago, I built this remote which is a standard RC remote. I hacked in all these buttons and also an Arduino with a liquid crystal display so it boots up nicely. It says it's an R6 control and I've got various options here which are menus for sounds which I can scroll through different sounds and different actions as well as some other quick shortcut keys. So this one plays the next R2-D2 sound, one of these activates the front utility arms and the hollow projector. Uh, and basically the way that works is that I've hacked into the two spare analogue channels on here and the remote and the button send an analogue value, a unique analogue value, into each channel. And that is read at the other end as a PWM value so that we can decide which button we've pressed and um, have subsequent actions produced. So I'm reading the values here in code and this has been discussed last time and basically there's a bunch of if statements that make it do different things based on the value from each channel. So reading it here with pulse in to get the value, what I actually found though was um, because it's not actually a true analogue value being put in at the transmitter end, it's a PWM value and I had to smooth it out with a capacitor. Uh, the values sometimes take time to rise and fall and change between values. So actually it was skipping the um, sort of side of another value as it was rising and causing other functions to trigger which is quite bad if we're operating a big piece of mechanics so what i've done is this dirty hack where i read the values and um, basically if they're bigger than a certain number which means i've pressed the button it waits 100 milliseconds then it reads them again and then it uses a second value to decide what to do so to do the actual 232 conversion which starts with this comment line here that says start 232 mode stuff I'm basically reading in the button press to check if I've pressed the button and I'm setting this variable called interlock to a number one and that may basically puts it into another mode and make sure that nothing else happens, none of the other multitasking carries on. So basically it means it's dedicated now for doing the 232 conversion. It also sets all of the logics, I've got a little function further up that sets all of the LEDs on the logic lights 
uh, based on these RGB values. So this sets it to red. So you basically press the button, all of the lights turn red. And while that value is not zero, then it does the stuff in this loop. So basically the first thing is checking again what button I've pressed, and this again is the delay for the voltage to stabilize, and then using the value, but only on channel six. Um, and if I press the button again straight away, then it basically makes sure that all my relays get switched off. I wait a bit, because I've basically got on the transmitter that the button um, triggers for 300 milliseconds as a delay, so that value is high for 300 milliseconds. So it waits so that it doesn't enter straight back into this interlock. And then it sets the interlock to zero, which breaks out of this interlock while statement, um, turning all the relays off and putting it back into normal mode. So basically I've got a button that I press and that puts it into the mode. If I press it again, it takes it out of the mode. And it can do that any time, so I can use that as an emergency stop as well because of course it turns all of the outputs low and turns off all of the motors. Um, and then within that we've got four other statements which basically activate the functions, putting the foot down, putting the foot up, and also converting the shoulders from three leg mode to two leg mode. However, I don't want to be able to retract the center foot when I'm in three leg mode and I'm driving around, even if I go into interlock mode and then try and retract the center foot because it will fall over. So what I've also got is um, basically these other interlocks, value two and three, and then um, conditional statements that say, if I've pressed the button and the interlock is three, then you can put the foot up and the interlock only gets to be three once I've converted to two legs. So basically I cannot uh, put that foot up while it's in only three leg mode. It'll only work when it's in two leg mode or at least once I've triggered the conversion. And each stage is a different button press. So there are five buttons dedicated to this or at least five menu options. So I have to use one to put it into this mode and then I can activate putting the uh, legs straight and into three leg mode and putting the foot up and down manually. So I physically wait for one process to finish before I then retract the foot. So here we are, everything's wired up and all the code is downloaded to the Arduino, which is in the back of the droid. So I can drive around like a normal droid would. Um, all the functions work that we had last time. So if I press various buttons on my remote, it makes functions activate. If I press this one, it gets sounds. And if I go to my sounds menu and activate the first one, yeah, we get Star Wars. and all of the things work. So uh, now I've got these extra buttons and we'll just turn the head round so you can see the red lights. So you can see the logic's there just to the left of its eyepiece. So if I go onto the actions menu on my remote and I go for 10, we should see all of those turn red. Um, in fact, 20 and 30 are for going into this mode. So we'll have to start at 40 and that should bring it back into two leg mode. There we go, and then 50 will take the centre foot up. There we go, and I can still drive around fairly okay like that. It's not too unstable, although I won't go very fast. So that's probably a bad idea. Um, and then obviously if I, if I exit this mode, so I go back to 10. You should see those logics gradually return to normal as the multitasking code kicks in and uh, all my multitasking starts to work. I can open my um, utility arms and all the good stuff. Um, so now if I want to convert into three leg mode and I should add that if I go now and press 20, nothing happens because I haven't activated the interlock. So let's just turn that round. So I have to go to 10 first all the lights go red. Now we can go to 20. You can see the center foot coming down. And now we can go to 30 and we can activate going into three leg mode. And off we go again. And of course the whole idea of the interlock is that I exit interlock mode by hitting 10 again when I've finished. 
and that definitely takes all of the outputs low so that means if um, an end switch falls off or a wire comes loose while I'm driving around it isn't still holding any outputs high which it would be otherwise um, and so therefore the motors don't run and nothing bad happens if I were to leave it in interlock mode then basically if one of those end stop switches came unswitched it would try and re-switch it because the output from the Arduino is still high trying to switch that relay which is of course switched through the end switch so if that switch does fail then it will still run that motor um, other than if I exit interlock mode then it won't because it took all of those outputs low so now there's no danger and it's um, just as safe as it was before I'd even put the electronics in so I'm fairly happy with the way that works I think the droid's fairly happy too. That's the end of this episode, but don't forget to check back in the future for more. We've got lots more things to do on this droid. Next time I'll probably be building the periscope or some utility arms, which will of course be animatronic and controlled by this remote. Just like to remind you that you can download the entire 3D CAD for this for free. Look at part 7A of this video series to find out where you can get it, or take a look at my website at xrobots.co.uk slash r6. I've published all of the Arduino code and all of the source files for all of the 3D parts in Autodesk 123D design format, which is free software. If you'd like to help fund my channel and ultimately the project so I can make more great content, which of course I explain in great detail, then have a look at my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.